simping is it's where you completely conform yourself to try and be what you think that they want you to be uh, and you're always you just turned into a simpleton if you see what a lot of hollywood is doing to men mm -hmm. men are always the buffoon and there was a, a man on the street series that went out and said what's good about women and people were answering oh everything what's good about a man oh well, we can't talk about that like, nothing's good about a man for harry uh, a record-breaking day. Sold 1.45 million copies day one in U.S., U.K., and Canada. Uh, a bunch of different things that came out. It's not, again, like I said, it's not like he needs uh, us to promote it anymore. The guy's already on track to being the you know, most selling. By the way, there was a Wall Street Journal video the other day I watched on how these guys make money. $120 million from Netflix. Apparently, he is a chief something of a company, a C-suite executive of a company. He gets $120 grand a year there. They bought their $14 million house in, uh, what is it, uh, uh, somewhere in Santa Barbara. What is that one place in Santa Barbara, the high-end community, Tom? That Oprah Winfrey lives in. There's an area. Oh, there's Carpinteria. There's Montecito. 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 Yeah. It's now this week. Montecito. Montecito. Yes, Montecito. that's true. It is Montecito. Yeah. So he's making $120 million from Netflix. They have a $14 million house. Mm -hmm. He sold 1.3 million copies of his book already. And if there is any, oh, poor me in that. I'm going to have zero. Well, you know, they have to have all that security, though, and they don't get any security no more from the British monarchy. Oh, no. They only have $100 <laughs> million dollars to pay for that security. How much could that security be? $2 million a year? Heck if I know. $2 million a year buy a heck of a lot of security. Look what $2 million a year buys in uh, what we get out of the full Palmer Law Group all the staff and how much work and, and all oh, that yeah. is and oh. compare the salaries of attorneys to the salaries of amazing badass ninja security people <laughs> right and then the expenses to practice law versus the expenses of what video security and bulletproofing your car and your windows that's way cheaper than running a law firm I think That's those bulletproofing cars are like a million dollars, though. Oh, I don't know about that. I, I think they're more like a hundred grand or sixty grand for for the, for the most part. And Con, I don't it, even know that they're I always say his name putting wrong. them in those type, type uh, of cars. Cayenne, Ka Kanye, Kanye, Kanye. He spent like a million dollars per vehicle mm -hmm. or something. That's crazy. Kanye. Yeah, <laughs> but it's bulletproof. You can, <laughs> yeah, you can you can buy a a Corvette for. A hundred grand, or you can buy a McLaurin for th three or five or a million. Yeah. So, was it Berlotte? Bergotti? Bugatti? Bugatti. Yeah. 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 You want a Bugatti, Jennifer? No. I didn't think so. No. Uh, so, anyways, you want to talk about Aston Martin? <laughs> you want an Aston Martin? <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> I know somebody who has an Aston Martin. <laughs> Those are pretty nice. She, uh, she did had one anyway. She traded it for a BMW i whatever the real expensive one mm. and I, don't, I don't know if she still even has it anymore what so, happened so yeah, I, read, I read in the New York Post that uh, Prince Harry he bitterly believed that he was only bred to offer literal spare parts for his brother in case his heir apparent ever needed new organs and he said and I quote two years older than me Willie was the heir whereas I was the spare mm. which is nuts he goes I was the shadow the support the plan B I was brought into the world in case something happened to Willie and he said um, he understood his role was a uh, diversion and distraction from his brother uh, kidney blood transfusion uh, bone marrow and he also noted King Charles III could never be on the plane with his elder son because uh, there must be no chance of his first and second in line to be thrown to be wiped out yeah that's Oh, I can. I bet that's true, but I don't believe that he was born to say William. I don't think Princess Diana gave birth to Harry to say, "Oh, you're one day going to say my oldest." I don't think that crossed her mind. I think somebody watched a little bit too much of The Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> somebody is watching a little bit too much science fiction. Going, oh, that's me. Mm -hmm. How much do you think is? Real of that versus him inserting his imagination and fantasies into that. I don't even know if it's him. I, this is, I seriously think he's been coerced by Maybe. her. Like, I don't think that stuff crossed his mind until, like, of course, the plain stuff I would agree with. Yeah. Like, because it's but like the president, the vice president. Yeah, the president, the uh, vice president, the speaker fly. of the house, and all. Yeah. The designated survivor. Yeah. I get it. And but. wanting to preserve your lineage. And it seems important for those people because that's... Otherwise, what justification do they have for having a monarchy at all? Because mm. why should they? What's the difference? But what's And what's the difference between that and like 
Tom Cruise or anybody else wanting to have, or just a regular person wanting their DNA and lineage to just continue. Right. It's just we're taken just, to the ultimate extreme. We're not ex- valuable extreme. enough, though. <laughs> we are to us. Yeah, to us. <laughs> yeah. But to them, it's all their ball game. Yeah. Well, but the other thing is, I mean, maybe they have a lot more people trying to murder them and destroy them. And, and because of the turmoil that it would inject into the country, I get that. And so yeah. there's part of it is birth and and lineage, but it's also government function and operation because you can't take out all of Congress or there, when there is no one in line to be the president mm-hmm. and then the United States won't have a president and then who controls what and then we go into anarchy. There's so much important there. So to have to protect that, okay. So poor baby can't fly on the on the England oh, that private is a, plane. Oh, that part to me is... Can't fly on daddy's private plane. No, I don't <laughs> even think it's that. I think it's more what he said that... Uh, William was he was born to provide organs and well, blood and stuff for William. So, yeah, I mean that's that that's, just seems a little ridiculous to me. Yeah, and I mean, were my younger brothers born to give me organs, and would they have to? Would he have been forced to do that, or does he have the opportunity to do that? Yeah, I exactly. I don't know how much different that is from any regular family. Exactly, and the fact that you would pay attention to people like that. If you want to give credence to that and believe it and make it real and make it an issue, you are you can do that. And you can have that psychological block. Or if you want to have the self-esteem to realize that's really stupid, that's funny, and realize the actual reality mm-hmm. of the situation, yeah. then yeah. Otherwise, this is just a, you need to grow up, little boy. Like, that's... That's nonsense. That's not why you were here. And if you want to choose to believe that, you can manifest that to be true. Mm-hmm. And that way you, you're you the victim. And then well, everybody will give you the attention. his mother, I would think that he would can realize that his mother would have never I, I, gave birth I'm to fairly confident, that. at least based on what I've seen about her, I think that would be not the case at all. No, she and, But were there other... Boys. So do you have in the royal family probably have some relatives that are all concerned about that and in La La land about how all that stuff works and, and fairly ungrounded? Probably. Mm-hmm. But you're giving more credit to it by speaking it out and trying to make it real to play yourself as the victim. Don't do that. Yeah. Have some confidence. It's be, almost like, you know how brothers will like get into it? Uh-huh. And then one brother says one thing to the other. Like, William was like, ha, 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 you were born to provide organs for me. If something would happen to me, like, Maybe. as a kid. Yeah. And then he's now using this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It sounds like yeah. something that was Well, I guess you got to write something in your book to sell a hundred or, or a million copies in a day. 1.3 million. Yeah. To make your hundred million dollars. Yeah. Well, can you imagine, like, realize, I mean... It's it's gonna be a shame because probably Harry and I might be might be able to get along and be friends or or whatever. But now I've made fun of him, so he's never gonna like me. <laughs> you know what? I'll be okay. <laughs> he, he he didn't just randomly come up with. It. I can't believe he wrote it. But seeing your brother going, I was only put here. Just God forbid something happens. Yeah, that. You I use me. Yeah, but, Holy! I, I don't, such an ultimate. I don't. I actually, by the way, the way succession works is as soon as William starts having kids, they're in front of you. Yeah. So when you talk about spare, you become spare, and then spare three, spare four, wow. spare five, wow. because all of William's kids are in front of Harry. Well, I don't think that's as crazy as it seems uh, yeah. because of this book, because that's just how the monarchy works. It's your firstborn son since yeah. since Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, yeah. Jesus. That's just since the tale is all this time. It's the firstborn son that inherits the throne. That's just kind of yeah. how it works. And then it didn't help <laughs> that his, as kids, uh, William was this good looking, blonde, yeah. blue eyed. And, and then Harry's literally the redheaded stepchild. So <laughs> yeah. like it, it, it didn't help his cause. But yeah, I, I, ironically, technically not a stepchild, but okay. somehow, well, you know, I'll be honest like, with you. Harry's better looking than William these days. Yeah. William has not aged well. He, well, he lost all his hair. Yeah, he does not look good. You don't think? No. Okay. <laughs> not at all. Now William's not going to like us either. <laughs> <laughs> the likelihood of me meeting William and Harry. You never know where this podcast is going to go, Jennifer. <laughs> William has kind of lost his hair. He ain't the hot stuff anymore. And all oh. of a sudden, Harry's where it's at. But Harry. It's, it's ironic that one of them has lost his hair and the other one's called Harry. He kind of was able to fly under the radar. There's a lot of things that Harry was able to do 
because he wasn't the heir to the throne. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? Cor Corrupted just posted a comment. Twenty dollars super chat. Shout out to you. Poor Harry is the most abused woman in the last fifty years. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> what did he say? And he goes, poor Harry is the most abused woman in the last twenty years. <laughs> oh God. So wrong. Oh my God. That's hilarious. What, what's funny was that my question was, is Harry a pimp or is he a simp? Oh. Because the whole knock on him is like, how good, and this is a little, this is a little rated R right here, how good must this girl be, Meghan Markle? Oh God. Pretty yeah. Like, yeah, I'm out. I'm out of the throne. I'm out of the monarchy. I'm just rolling with my girl now. They're, uh, her skills must be all right is what She's I'm saying. Amazing. I don't know. <laughs> it's just her. I think there's a lot of things that are in this book Jeez. from the family that was there uh, as well. And he found a girl that he loved and he's being loyal to her. I respect that. But there's a lot of this goes in here that predates her of just growing up number two and everything that went around it and Kamala and how that relationship happened. Him just saying this is how it happened this is how i felt you said i, I didn't believe me, i didn't read the book not even one sentence but you're saying there's stuff that you relate to because he, he loves his girl and he's just going to give it all no up i think her? i think it's respect what he, he's defending his wife with respect but let's isolate it the defense of his wife is here and now he's talking about a lot of other things over here what's he defending her from the family from, and the way they so treated her from what i from what i hear a lot of the members of the family were very very welcoming to her and probably said some things about how she's going to have to behave and do this that or the other and that she rebelled against that. Supposedly, That's, she was just treated so terribly, and there was like, how so? She was in tears, and all these things were happening. That Kate Middleton was even nice to her. And okay, well, we'll take a look at that and see if we can get to the bottom of that in our in our totally, investigation in our totally pointless <laughs> series at the Lawyer Dana podcast <laughs> on the royal family. <laughs> Like his dad getting divorced, his mom dying, all the things there. That predated his wife. So there's a yeah. pantheon of things in the book that talk about his various chips and, and insults and uh, you know the things that he's really resentful of. And then he gets he falls in love, he gets married, and he's like, okay, this is red line last straw. You know what Bill Clinton once said? I don't know where I saw this. Where are my cigars? No, he said one time where... Where was that? Was that not it? Yeah, I'm actually giving a serious <laughs> well, I don't, issue here. So, yeah. so, so one time he said... Is, Tom, guys, not stop for a second. Stop. So one time I, he said... Um, uh, he said... Uh, Asking question about his mom. Apparently his mom was bipolar or something like that. And he says, there's literally no benefit for me saying anything about my mom. Anything bad about my mom. Yeah. To me, Rob, your mic. To me, that's social intelligence is what that is. Okay. For somebody to say, there's literally nothing beneficial of me. No, no good comes from me criticizing my mom. You can't even find it. Like, wow. And it's a, it's a book, uh, Hypomanic Edge, talks about him and another one called First Rate Madness. Talks about him, talks about Jackson, talks about Kennedy. And I, I, uh, I don't know. I have a very hard time with us recognizing uh, somebody trashing his parents that made him relevant in the first place that's kind of what i think yeah in the family you came out of if you weren't from that family you would have sold five copies of your book <laughs> i've sold more than that in my book but <laughs> he has a really good point he wouldn't have sold any of these copies of of, of the book he's right on day one mm -hmm. the only reason you sold one and a half million copies is because of your lineage and your family Exactly. Yet he criticizes the very hand that feeds him. And, yeah. and to allow a woman to be okay with you trashing that legacy, Good point. I have a very hard time yeah. with that character uh, uh, of, uh, of, that, um, of the duo. Pat, a do, very, very hard Pat, time. But do, do you think, and I, I, agree, I, agree. I mean, could you go out and trash your parents no. and your family? No. There have been times when I've thought some displeasant thoughts about I certain mean, members of my family. I mean, everybody has moments with their family. Right. I mean... Do you go out... I mean, were we going to sit here and talk about that on the podcast? No. Have I? Have I yet? If I did, like, I think it's accidental. No. Like I said, I think she's a pot stirrer. <laughs> <laughs> you, seem, you seem to really think that. <laughs> I've thought that from the very beginning. Well, I, I, th I suspect that. I thought that when they were getting married, I was like, oh, Lord. Let's see if this will work, because I didn't think it would. There's too much drama there. I'm not sure that it is. Oh, I, I think they're struggling personally. Yeah, could be. I do. Probably. And it wouldn't surprise me if down the road they divorce. I like, I, I, I think that's me. I think that's in the cards. I think that's probably inevitable. So because I don't think, and you know where he said here is he is he uh what was he say is he a uh, something or a simp? What was the thing? Is he, um, what was that that he said? Anyway, but I, I, I don't know what the other one is, but he probably is simping a little bit. You know what simping is? No, I've never heard that before. Um, it's where you completely conform yourself to try and be what you think that they want you to be. Um, and you're always, you, you have no, you, you've just turned into a simpleton. Yeah. 
Um, that's one description of it. I forget what the technical description of it is, but it's that he's just lost his own identity and is letting whatever her, she, he's, he's letting her lead him around uh, mm -hmm. into, and, and he can't do anything right. It's, it's a lot of what, if you see what a lot of Hollywood is doing to men, mm -hmm. men are always the buffoon. Um, they were, and there was a, a man on the street series that went out and said, uh, what's good about women? And people were answering, Oh, everything. What's good about a man? Oh, well, we can't talk about that. Like nothing's mm -hmm. good about a man hmm. as opposed to saying all of the awesome things about men and all of lots of awesome things about women. People, everyone has good things about them. And especially right. if they're doing things well, but on Hollywood, no, you've got to have, the women and the children are the heroes and the man is the bubbling, bumbling buffoon and who, who always has to learn the lesson there as opposed to the parents teaching children how to lead and be better mm -hmm. and, and how to grow up and, and be strong and self-sustaining and things that are very good for them. So um, those men that they're portraying in Hollywood, the, the failures that always have to be rescued by the women and children mm -hmm. are incompetent with all the flaws and non leaders and none of those things. That's the kind of simp that's the yeah. definition of benefit. Okay. Would you guys agree Did I kind of hit that on the head? Cool. So I by the way, you don't have to simp down to that. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell me, no, that's not it. And I, I'll listen. <laughs> I agree with 100%. But, and, but do, do you think also the resentment that he has that what they did to him and that he was a spare even gave him more incentive to be like, you know what the right. hell with Guess that? what? Certain things should be motivators that you never tell anybody. Mm -hmm. Certain things in life are great motivators you never reveal to anybody. Good point. That's the line. And by the way, you could have been born in Compton. Mm -hmm. You could have been born in Liberty City. You could have been born in anywhere else. You happen to be born and you're ungrateful. Like the average human being, whether they like him or not, they have to read that and say, I don't give a shit. Let Make me a spare. <laughs> Can I give spare fame too? Are you kidding me? Like, 100%. what are you talking about, bro? Like, you want me to cry about you being a spare? And because of that, you sold 1.5 million copies of your book? I don't know. I, 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 I don't, because what this is, what, what we're yeah. recognizing and making okay is, hey, you know, why don't you go? Like, you know the whole uh, uh, Kellyanne Conway family with the daughter? Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan. Yeah, this is why I never once watched Keeping Up With Kardashians. I've never me watched either. any of that stuff one time. I didn't, I didn't watch it. I, I'm not a fan of what this, uh, you watch that show? The Kardashians? Yeah. I've watched it in the past. You I don't have? watch it. I've anymore. never seen a single episode. Of that. Um, you're not missing much. Okay, good. <laughs> Whole story of a. I mean, listen. You know who's loving it? Whoever published the book. Who published the book? By the way, is it Simon and Schuster or Penguin? I'm curious to know who published this book. Whoever published the book and convinced them, yep. and, and somehow, some way, sold them on what to add, the juice to add in there. The yep. editor, the writer, Penguin. Listen, Penguin, you won. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, yeah. Penguin. Because yeah. Penguin doesn't give a shit. They're like, add more shit, talk more yep. shit, say more shit. Great. Boom. Good for you. Yep. I. Uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Uh, by the way, don't be surprised if in 40 years their kid writes a book about them and tells the truth about who Megan is. This shit. Ooh, that'll be great. I didn't know they had a kid. Do they have a kid? They have two. They do? How old are they? Oh, let's see. Archie is probably a few years old, and then they had a baby girl. Okay. I don't, I don't know how old she is. Yeah, I yeah. bet their book's going to come out in the 20s because they're going to see how well that worked for their parents and they're going to have a, another generation of little spoiled brat tatty tails and mom <laughs> and daddy are bad how do you raise grateful children when you are so ungrateful for what you've received mm -hmm. and and you're such the victim what do you think what kind of kids are you going to raise you're going to raise little victim ets vi or vic vic victim and victims i don't know <laughs> M many victims this shit is not a. Possibly. You don't do that. He, he even no. said he, he even said he, had, he got frostbite. Tom, you were talking about this right. He got he even he's dangling. He's dangling out of frostbite. Yeah, it's, it's uh, too much TMI, no. bro. Oh, it was a party life. And when I look back and I say, okay, I can see all these things he says he's offended and resentful and then protecting his wife. I objectively look at that, but then I also step back from it and say, dude, you have lived like the most in like a king. Have you lived like a king? <laughs> you at least well, lived like you a know prince. What? You grew up like a prince. That's literally what it is. You grew up like a prince. I think what's going to happen is, this is what I think. 
I think Meghan Markle will try to repeat the whole Princess Diana thing. Oh, she's already trying. She dresses like her. I think she will try she to. She is in I, the ultimate fantasy I think of trying they, to do that. I think when they do separate and they do go through a divorce, she will make it out like she was a victim and she oh, yeah. was this and oh, she was that. Oh, for sure. And she'll, she'll want the love of the people like she, Diana had, so but you she you heard it here on the Lawyer Dana podcast. She, Jennifer Hardy Har Har making her your your big prediction about but that. But I she won't get that though. I don't think she will. No, she doesn't. Well, no, she'll get it from a lot of people. But I just think there's a probably she'll a get vast it from, majority aren't gonna fall. She's for that. gonna get it from the people that are like her. I think that she is going to be uh Johnny Depp's ex wife. What was her name? Oh uh, Heather no. No. Amber Heard. Amber Heard. Yeah. yeah. I think she might get a little bit of the Amber Heard <laughs> treatment. Because I think Amber Heard has a small amount of people that are kind of backing her, but they realize, oh, she is the Jesse Smollett of the, the I'm a victim as a woman. Mm -hmm. And I, I think probably Meghan Markle will be the Amber Heard of the royal family at some point. Maybe. Yeah. Same These guys seem to agree. Part. And by the way, we did not watch this. You're, you're watching this yeah, video this is the, the first time. time I've ever all seen I this. did was, all I saw was the title, and I go, all right, that'll be something good for us. Pretty enabled to. life mm -hmm. with Watch. unlimited allowance, courtesy of the British taxpayers. Exactly. Come on. There's a part of me that says, okay, I can read and I can objectively understand how a person might feel these ways. But then you step back from it and say, dude, do you remember when you partied in Las Vegas and you were like naked for three days and all of the American tabloids had you naked for three days and it was like no consequence and you were just this party animal and you could do it because you were number two. Mm -hmm. If you had been yep. number one in line, you couldn't do it. And so, yep. you know, now you're writing a book and you're, you're, you're milking this cow. So, I, and I don't have a lot of sympathy for that and I'm with you on that point. Yeah. Yep. I'll say one Anyways, thing about, about to this, wrap up. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, there's, last thought here. There, everyone talks about, especially, I mean, we're talking about male, female relations, intersexual dynamics that we're talking about. We're talking about a husband and a wife here. So, a lot of times you hear the, the term like, oh, he's got game, he's got game, all that. but there's another term that they use in the manosphere called holding frame. And holding frame would be, I'm a freaking prince. Meg is that kind of what I was talking about, maybe? Holding frame? What is he talking about? I've never heard. Have y'all heard that before? Holding frame? Like holding on to, you, like seeing who you really are and staying in is frame? Is he saying frame or fame? Frame. I thought he said holding frame. I'm not sure. Meghan Markle. Yeah. My family is the is the monarchy of the UK of Great Britain and beyond. You could go back and being a C-list actress on Suits or whatever the hell show yeah. she was on, or you could be a freaking princess. Here's the catch, though, baby. You're coming into my world. Mm -hmm. I'm right. second in line to the throne. You're gonna exactly, which is exactly what he should have done. And if he would have if he would have been stable in himself, instead he caved and like that's that's simping. We can do whatever we want in this world, but this is part of it. But I feel like there's an element of it's like this is this is a representation of the patriarchy, and we're gonna tear this down. And you know, female is the future, that whole thing. And he succumbed to that rather than holding frame. So if you like this clip and you want to watch yep. another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire frame. podcast, mm -hmm. click right here. All right. Well, we will see. We will see, and we will follow up. And I guess we're gonna have a series on the royals. I don't know. Maybe it depends. Basically, however much we feel like talking about the royals. Yes. But what we will—they're interesting. What we will talk about <laughs> is. The, are the things that you comment on in the comment section. Yes. Tell us if you like this. If you like us commenting on videos, if you like just our open source, if you like us better with guests. Yeah, tell us if you like us, we're doing it uh, all. you know, reviewing different podcasts and answering questions yep. from other guests, from other podcasts. Yeah. We can bring in more insight. And as we see other podcasts, this is one of the big parts of why we're doing things like this is because when I see bad advice on the internet, we're going to comment about it. And I'm going to add what I think and what my opinion is. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I, even, even if people are giving wrong advice, um, it probably comes from a good place. They're probably trying their best, but we're going to add to that. And so mm -hmm. right now when all the world's information is at your fingertips, it's really important who to listen to because you're gonna find confirmation bias from a lot of different things. So you want to listen to sources who actually have done it and who actually know. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the best reasons to watch us is because we are, at this point in our lives, very experienced and still, we are old enough to know better and young enough to be on the forefront of what's <laughs> going on and to help guide and lead and teach. And so that's the part of the point of the Lawyer Dana podcast. Please like and yes. share, Gets, have your, Tell your friends about us and we will see you in the next episode. Bye.